Chapter Five: The Names of Their Hells. At that time, Universal Worthy Bodhisattva Mahasattva said to Earth Star Bodhisattva, "Human One, for the sake of gods and dragons, those in the fourfold assembly, and all other beings of the present and future." Please tell us the names of the household where beings in the Saha world, on the continent of Jambudvipa, must suffer retributions for offenses they commit. Please also describe what happens during retributions undergone for evil deeds, so that beings in the future Dharma ending age will know what those retributions are. A star bodhisattva replied. Human one, based on the awesome spiritual power of the Buddha, and relying on your strength, great Bodhisattva, I will give a general list of the names of the hells and describe some of what happens during retributions undergone for offenses and evil deeds. Human one, in eastern Jambudvipa, there is a mountain range called Iron Ring. That mountain range is pitch black because the light of the sun and moon does not shine on it. A great hell named Ultimate Relentless is located there. Another hell is called Great Abyssy. There is also a hell called Four Horns, a hell called Flying Knives, a hell called Fiery Arrows. A hell called squeezing mountains, a hell called piercing spears, a hell called iron cups, a hell called iron beds, a hell called iron oxen, a hell called iron clothing, a hell called thousand blades, a hell called iron axes, a hell called molten copper. A hell called embracing pillar. A hell called flowing fire. A hell called blowing tongues. A hell called hacking heads. A hell called burning feet. A hell called pecking pecking eyes. A hell called iron palace. A hell called quarreling. A hell called iron axe. And a hell called massive hatred. The Earth Star Bodhisattva said, "Human one within the Iron Ring are endless hells like that. There is also the hell of crying out, the hell of pulling tongues, the hell of dung and urine, the hell of copper locks." The hell of fire elephants, the hell of fire dogs, the hell of fire horses, the hell of fire oxen, the hell of fire mountains, the hell of fire rocks, the hell of fire beds, the hell of fire beams, the hell of fire eagles, the hell of sawing teeth, the hell of flaying skin, the hell of drinking blood, the hell of burning hands, the hell of burning feet. The hell of hanging hooks. The hell of fire rooms. The hell of iron cells, and the hell of fire wolves. Each of those hells contains lesser hells numbering from one to three, four, two hundreds of thousands. Each of those lesser hells has its own name. Earth Star Bodhisattva told Universal Worthy Bodhisattva. Human one, such are the karmic responses of beings in Jambudvipa who commit evil deeds. The power of karma is extremely great. It rivals Mount Sumeru in its height. It surpasses the great oceans in its depths. It obstructs the path leading to sagehood. For that reason, beings should never think that minor bad deeds are unimportant. Or assume that they do not count as offenses. After death, there will be retributions to undergo that reflect all those details. Fathers and sons have the closest relationship, but their roles diverge 
and each must go his own way. Even if they met, neither would consent to undergo suffering in the other's place. Now, based on the awesome spiritual power of the Buddha, I will describe some of the retributions for offenses that take place in the house. Please, human one, listen for a moment to what I am going to say. Universal Worthy replied, I have long known of the retributions that come about in the three evil paths. My hope in asking the human one to describe them is that when beings in the future Dharma ending age who are committing evil deeds hear the human one's descriptions, they will be moved to take refuge with the Buddha. Earth Star said, Human one, this is what happens during retributions in their house. Offenders may go through a hell in which their tongues are stretched out and plowed through by cattle, or to a hell in which their hearts are pulled out and eaten by yakshas, or to a hell in which their bodies are cooked in cauldrons of boiling oil, or to a hell in which they are forced to embrace red hot copper pillars also a hell in which they are burned by a fire that constantly pursues them, also a hell in which cold and ice are all pervasive, also a hell in which excrements and urine are endless, also a hell in which flying mazes are unavoidable, also a hell in which fiery spears stab them repeatedly, also a hell in which they are constantly beaten on the chests and backs, or to a hell in which their hands and feet are burned, or to a hell in which they are bound by iron snakes that carry around them, or to a hell in which they are pursued by racing iron dogs, or to a hell in which their bodies are stretched by iron moons. Human one to inflict these retributions in each hell hundreds of thousands of instruments made of copper, iron, stone, or fire arise from comic forces. Those four materials come into being in response to the kinds of karma that offenders create. If I were to explain in detail what happens during retributions in the house, then I would need to tell of the hundreds of thousands of sufferings that must be undergone in each specific hell. How much more would that be the case for the sufferings in all the many hells? Now, having based myself upon the awesome spiritual power of the Buddha, I have given a general answer to human one's question. For if I were to speak in detail, it would take ends. Chapter 6 The First Come One's Praises At that time, the world honored one emitted a great bright light from his entire body, totally illuminating Buddha lands as many as grains of sand in millions of billions of Ganges rivers. His strong voice reached all the bodhisattvas, masattvas in those Buddha lands, as well as the gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits humans, non-humans, and others. As he said, Listen today, as I praise Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva, who displays inconceivable awesome spiritual strength and compassionate power throughout the ten directions in rescuing and protecting beings who are suffering for offenses they have committed. After I pass into tranquility, all of you Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, and all of you gods, dragons, ghost spirits, and others should use vast numbers of expedient means to protect this sutra and to cause all beings to attain the bliss of Nirvana. After that was said, the Bodhisattva named Universal Expansive rose in the assembly, placed his palms together respectfully, and said to the Buddha, we are now about to witness the world honored one praising Earth Star Bodhisattva's inconceivably great awesome spiritual power. 
we hope that the wound honored one will also aid being sent in the future Dharma ending age by telling us about how Earth Star Bodhisattva benefits people and gods and about the workings of cause and effect. That will help the gods, dragons, and the rest of the Eightfold Division, along with beings of the future, to receive the Buddha's teaching respectfully. At that time, the world on one said to the Bodhisattva universally expansive and to all those in the fourfold assembly, listen attentively, listen attentively, I will briefly describe to you how Earth Star Bodhisattva's virtuous deeds keep benefiting people and gods. Universal Expansive replied, Excellent, world on one, we will be happy to listen. The Buddha told the Bodhisattva Universal Expansive, if in the future good men or women, upon hearing Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva's name, place their palms together, praise him, bow to him, or gaze at him in worship, they will overcome 30 years worth of offenses. Universally expansive, if a good men or women gaze upon and bow but once to painted or drawn images of the Bodhisattva or images made of clay, stone, lacquer, gold, silver, or bronze, they will be reborn 100 times in the heaven of the 33 and will eternally avoid falling into the evil destinies. If their blessings in the heavens come to an end and they are born in the human realm, they will become national leaders who will suffer no loss or benefits. There may be women who dislike having female bodies. Suppose they wholeheartedly make offerings to images of Earth Star Bodhisattva, such as painting or images made of clay, stone, lacquer, brass, iron, or other materials. If they continually make offerings day after day without fail of flowers, incense, food, drink, clothing, colored silks, banners, money, jewels, and other items, then when those good women finish their current female retributions, Throughout thousands of millions of ants, they will never again be born in worlds where they are women, much less be one, unless they choose to through the strength of their compassionate vows in order to liberate beings. Based on the strength of their offerings to Earth Star Bodhisattva and the power of their meritorious virtues, they will not be born with female bodies or hundreds of thousands of ants. Moreover, universally expansive, some women may have imperfect features or be prone to sickness. Disliking those problems, they can sincerely gaze at and bow to images of Earth Star Bodhisattva with sincere resolve for even just a few minutes and consequently Throughout millions of future ends of rebirth, they will continually be endowed with full and perfect features. If those women whose features are currently imperfect do not dislike having female bodies, then throughout millions of billions of lives, they will always be born as women of royal lineage or will marry into royalty or will become daughters of prime ministers or women in prominent families or daughters of great elders. They will be of upright birth and full-featured. They will receive such blessings from having sincerely beheld and worshipped Earth Star Bodhisattva. Moreover, universally expansive, there may be good men or women who are able to play music sing or chant praises and make offerings of incense and flowers before images of the Bodhisattva or who are able to exhort one or more others to do likewise. Now, 
and in the future, such people will be surrounded day and night by hundreds of thousands of ghosts and spirits, who will even prevent bad news from reaching their ears, much less allow them to be personally involved in any accidents. Moreover, universally expansive in the future, evil people, evil spirits. Or evil ghosts may see good men or women taking refuge with, respectfully making offerings to, praising, beholding, and bowing to images of Earth Star Bodhisattva. Those beings may make the mistake of ridiculing such acts of worship, saying that they are of no merit. They may sneer at those good people, condemn them behind their backs, or get a group. Or even want another person to have even as little as one thought of condemnation. Such beings will fall into the avishy hell and the extreme misery they will undergo as retribution for their slander will not even will not end even after the thousand Buddhas of the worthy Aaron have passed into tranquility. Only after that end will they be reborn among the hungry ghosts, where they will spend a thousand more ends before being reborn as animals. Only after another thousand ends will they obtain human bodies, but they will be poor and lowly, with incomplete faculties, and their evil karma will cause them to suffer mental afflictions. Before long, they will fall into the evil paths again. Universally expansive, such are the retributions that those who ridicule and slander others' acts of worship will undergo. How much worse will the retributions be if, besides their slandering, they have other evil views? Moreover. Universally expansive in the future, men or women may be bedridden for a long time, and in spite of their wishes, be unable either to get well or to die. At night, they may dream of evil ghosts, or of family and relatives, or of wandering on dangerous paths. In numerous nightmares, they may roam with ghosts and spirits. As days, months, and years go by, such people may become weak and emaciated, cry out in pain in their sleep, and become progressively more depressed and melancholy. Those things happen when the force of their karma has not yet been determined, making it difficult for them to die and impossible for them to be cured. The ordinary eyes of men and women cannot perceive such phenomena. In that situation, other people should recite the sutra out loud once before images of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas on behalf of any such sick person, or they could offer to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas possessions that the sick person cherishes. Such as clothing, jewels, gardens, or houses, they should speak distinctly to the sick person, saying, "Now, before this sutra or these images, we are offering these items on behalf of a sick person." They may offer sutras or images or commission images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, or build stupas or monasteries. Or light or lamps, or give to the eternally dwelling. They should tell the sick persons three times about the of offerings that are being made, making sure that they both hear and understand what is being done. If the sick people's consciousnesses are already scattered, and their breathing has stopped, then for one, two, three, four. Or on through seven days, the other pupil should continue to inform them clearly of the offerings and to read this sutra aloud. 
when those sick people's lives end, they will gain liberation from all their heavy and disastrous offenses committed in previous lives, even offenses warrant, warranting fivefold relentless retribution. They will be born in places where they will always know past lives. So how much greater will the karmic rewards be if good men or women can write out this sutra themselves or commission others to do so or if they can carve or paint images themselves or commission others to do so. The benefits they receive will be great indeed. Therefore, universally expansive, if you see people reading and reciting this sutra or even having a single thought appraising for it or if you meet someone who reveals it you should employ hundreds of thousands of expedients to resort to such people to be diligent and not retreat in both the present and future uh, the present and the future they will be able to obtain thousands of billions of inconceivable meritorious benefits moreover Universally expansive beings in the future, while dreaming on drowsy, may see ghost spirits and other forms that are either sad, weeping, worried, fearful, or terrified. Those are all fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, or and other relatives from one, ten, a hundred or a thousand lives past who have not yet been able to leave the bad destinies. They have nowhere to turn for the powerful blessings needed to rescue them, and so they try to communicate with their closest descendants, so with their closest descendants, hoping that those relatives will use some skillful means to help them get out of the evil paths. Universally expansive, using your spiritual power, exhort those descendants to recite this sutra with sincere resolve before the images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, or to request others to recite it, either three or seven times. When the sutra has been read aloud the proper number of times, relatives in the evil paths will obtain liberation and never again appear to those who are dreaming or drowsy. Moreover, universally expansive, people of low station and those who are slaves or bonded or deprived of their freedom in other ways may be aware of their past deeds and wish to repent of them and reform. If while beholding and bowing to earth stop Bodhisattva's image with sincere resolve for seven days, they are able to recite his name a full ten thousand times. Then, when their current retribution ends, those people will always be born into wealth and honor for hundreds of thousands of lives. How much the more will they avoid any of the sufferings of the three evil paths? Moreover, universally expansive, in the future in Jambu Vipa, when the wives of Kshatriyas, Brahmas, Elders, and Upasakas of the various families and clans are about to give birth to sons or daughters, the family members should recite this inconceivable sutra and the Bodhisattva's name a full ten thousand times during the seven days before the birth of those children. If those infants, whether male or female, had been destined to undergo a terrible retribution for things done in past lives, they will be liberated from those retributions. They will be peaceful, happy, easily raised, and will have long lives. If those children were due to receiving blessings, then their peace and happiness will increase, as will their lifespans. Moreover, universally expansive on the 1st, 8th, 14th, 15th, 18th, 23rd, 24th, 28th, 29th, and 30th days of the lunar month, the offenses of beings are 
tabulated and their gravity assessed. Every single movement or stirring of thought on the part of beings of Jambu Vipatri's karma and offenses. How much more is that the case when they blatantly indulge in killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, false speech, and hundreds of thousands of other kinds of offenses? If they are able to recite this sutra once for those 10 vegetarian days, before the images of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, or worthy ones and sages, then no disasters will occur within a radius of 100 yuanas around them. The relatives of those who reside both old and young, now and in the future, will be apart from the evil paths throughout hundreds of thousands of years. If they can recite this sutra, once on each of these 10 vegetarian days, then there will be no accidents or illnesses in the family and they will have food and clothing in abundance. Universally expansive, you should know of the beneficial deeds done by Earth Star Bodhisattva as he makes use of his indescribably millions of billions of great awesome spiritual powers. The beings of Jambu Vipa have strong affinities with this Bodhisattva. If they hear the Bodhisattva's name, see the Bodhisattva's image, or hear but a few words, a verse or a sentence of this sutra, they will enjoy particularly wonderful peace and happiness in this present life. Through thousands of millions of future lives, they will always be handsome or beautiful and they will be born into honorable and wealthy families. Having heard the Buddha first come one praise earth store Bodhisattva in that way, universally expansive Bodhisattva knelt, placed his palms together and again addressed the Buddha, saying, Won't honored one, I have long known that this Bodhisattva has both inconceivable spiritual powers and mighty vows. I have questioned the first come one so that beings in the future could know of his benefits. I now receive your answer most respectfully. World Honored One, what should be title of this sutra be and how should we propagate it? The Buddha said so universally expansive. This sutra has three titles. The first is the past vows of Earth Star Bodhisattva. It is also called Earth Star's Past Conduct and also Sutra of the Power of Earth Star's Past Vows. Because this Bodhisattva repeatedly makes such great and mighty vows throughout long ends to benefit beings, you should all propagate this sutra in accordance with them. After Universal Expansive had heard that, he placed his palms together respectfully, made obeisance, and withdrew. Chapter 7 Benefiting the Living and the Dead At that time, Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva said to the Buddha, World Honored One, I see that every single movement or stirring of thought on the part of beings of Jambu Vipa is an offense. Beings tend to use up any wholesome benefits they accrue and many of them end up retreating from their initial resolve. If they encounter evil conditions, they magnify them with every thought. They are like people trying to carry heavy ropes while walking through mud. Each step becomes more difficult and the ropes more cumbersome as their feet sink deeper. If they meet a mentor, he may be strong enough to lighten or even totally remove their burdens. Helping them thus, the mentor will then advise them to stay on solid ground and be mindful never to go back into that treacherous path. World Honored One, the bad habits of beings range from minor to major, 
since all beings have such habits, their families or relatives should create blessings for them when they are on the verge of dying in order to assist them on the road ahead. That may be done by hanging banners and canopies, lighting oil lamps, reciting the sacred sutras, and making offerings before the images of Buddhas or sages. Another way to assist them is by reciting the names of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and Pratika Buddhas so that the recitation of each name passes by the ear of the dying one and is heard in his fundamental consciousness. Suppose the evil karma created by beings was such that they ought to fall into the bad destinies. If their relatives cultivate wholesome causes on their behalf when they are close to death, then their manifold offenses can be dissolved. If relatives can further do many good deeds during the first 49 days after the death of such beings, then the decreased can leave the evil destinies forever, be born as humans and gods, and receive supremely wonderful bliss. Their surviving relatives will also receive limitless benefits. Therefore, before the Buddhas, world honored ones, as well as before the gods, dragons, and the rest of the Eightfold Division, humans and non-humans, I now exhort beings of Jambu Vipa to be careful to avoid harming, killing, and doing other unwholesome deeds, to refrain from worshipping ghosts and spirits or making sacrifices to them, and never to call on mountain sprites on the day of death. Why is that? Killing, harming, and making sacrifices do not even have a tiny hair breadth of power with which to benefit the deceased. Such acts only bind up the conditions of offenses so that they grow ever deeper and heavier. The deceased might have been due to increase his potential for sagehood or gain birth among humans or gods in his next life or in the future. But if his family commits offenses in his name, his good rebirth will be delayed. How much more would that be the case for people on the verge of death who during their lives had failed to plant even a few good roots? Each offender has to undergo the bad destinies according to his own karma. How could anyone bear to have relatives and add to that karma? That would be like having a neighbor add a few more things to a load of over a hundred pounds being carried by someone who had already traveled a long distance and who had not eaten for three days. If that extra weight were added, that person's burden will become even more unbearable. Won't honored one, I see that beings of Jambu Vipa will themselves receive the benefit of any good deeds they are able to do that accord with the Buddha's teachings. That holds true even when the deeds are as small as a strand of hair, a drop of water, a grain of sand, or a mote of dust. After that had been said, an elder named the Great Eloquence rose in the assembly. He had realized non-production long ago and was appearing in the body of an elder only to teach and transform those in the ten directions. Putting his palms together respectfully, he asked Earth Star Bodhisattva, Great Lord, after pupil in Jambu Vipa die, and their close and distant relatives cultivate merit by making vegetarian meal offerings and doing other such good deeds, will the deceased obtain merit and virtue significant enough to bring about their liberation? Earth Star replied, 
elder based on the awesome power of the Buddhas. I will now expound this principle for the sake of beings of the present and future elder. If beings of the present and future when on the verge of dying, hear the name of one Buddha, one Bodhisattva, or one Prajika Buddha, they will attain liberation whether they have committed offenses or not. When men or women laden with offenses who failed to plant good causes die, even they can receive one seventh of any merit dedicated to them by relatives who do good deeds on their behalf. The other six sevenths on the, of the merit will return to the living relatives who did the good deeds. It follows that good men and women of the present and future who cultivate why they are strong and healthy will receive all of the benefit derived. The arrival of the great ghost of uh, impermanence is so unexpected that the deceased one's consciousness is first warm in darkness and obscurity unaware of offenses and blessings. For 49 days, the deceased are as if deluded or deaf, or as if in causal where their karmic retributions are being decided. Once judgment is fixed, they are reborn according to their karma. In the time before rebirths are determined, the deceased suffer from thousands upon thousands of anxieties. How much more is that the case? for those who are to fall into the bad destinies. Throughout 49 days, those whose lives have ended and who have not yet been reborn will be hoping every moment that their immediate relatives will earn blessings powerful enough to rescue them. At the end of that time, the deceased will undergo retribution according to their karma. If someone is an offender, he may pass through hundreds of thousands of years without even a day's liberation. If someone's offenses deserve fivefold relentless retribution, he will fall into the great house and undergo incessant suffering throughout hundreds of millions of ends. Moreover, elder, when beings who have committed comic offenses die, their relatives may prepare vegetarian offerings to aid them on their comic paths. In the process of preparing the vegetarian meal and before it has been eaten, rice washing water and vegetable leaves should not be thrown on the ground. Before the food is offered, to the Buddhas and the Sangha, no one should eat it. If there is a laxness or transgression in this matter, then the deceased will receive no strength from it. But if pu purity is rigorously maintained in making the offering to the Buddhas and the Sangha, the deceased will receive one seventh of the merit, therefore elder. By performing vegetarian offerings on behalf of deceased fathers, mothers, and other relatives while making earnest supplication on their behalf, beings of Jambufipa benefit both the living and the dead. After that was said, thousands of millions of Nayutas of ghosts and spirits of Jambufipa who were in the palace of the Chajashim Shah heaven made the unlimited resolve to attain Bodhi. The elder great eloquence made obeisance and withdrew. Chapter 8 Praises of Lord Yama and his followers. At that time, from within the Iron Ring Mountain, Lord Yama and his following of infinite gods, kings, came before the Buddha in the Chajashrimsha heaven. They were the Ghost King Evil Poison, the Ghost King Many Evils, the Ghost King Great Argument, the Ghost King White Tiger, 
the Ghost King Blood Tiger, the Ghost King Crimson Tiger, the Ghost King Spreading Disaster, the Ghost King Flying Body, the Ghost King Lightning Flash, the Ghost King Wolfer Tooth, the Ghost King Thousand Eyes, the Ghost King Animal Eater, the Ghost King Rock Bearer, the Ghost King Lord of Bad News, the Ghost King Lord of Calamities, the Ghost King Lord of Food, the Ghost King Lord of Wealth, the Ghost King Lord of Domestic Animals, the Ghost King Lord of Birds, the Ghost King Lord of Beasts, the Ghost King Lord of Mountain Sprites, the Ghost King Lord of Birth, the Ghost King Lord of Life, the Ghost King Lord of Sickness, the Ghost King Lord of Danger, the Ghost King Three Eyes, the Ghost King Four Eyes, the Ghost King Five Eyes, the Ghost King Chili Shu, the Great Ghost King Chili Shu, the Ghost King Chili Cha, the Great Ghost King Chili Cha, the Ghost King No Cha, the Great Ghost King No Cha, the and other such Great Ghost Kings. With the um, wonders of thousands of minor Ghost Kings, who dwelt throughout Jambu Vipa, each presiding over certain jurisdictions. Aided by the Buddha's awesome spiritual strength and the power of earth store Bodhisattva Mahasattva, all these ghost kings joined Lord Yama in the Chajrachimsha heaven and together they stood to one side. Then Lord Yama knelt, placed his palms together and said to the Buddha, World Honored One, aided by the Buddha's awesome spiritual strength and the power of Earth Star Bodhisattva, I have been able to come here with all these ghost kings to join this great assembly in the Chajachimsha heaven, which will be very much to our benefit. There is now a small doubt that I should like to express, and we hope the World Honored One will be compassionate and resolve it. The Buddha told Lord Yama, I will answer any question you would like to ask. At that time, Lord Yama looked respectfully at the world honored one, made obeisance, turned his head to acknowledge Earth Star Bodhisattva, and then said to the Buddha, World honored one, I observe that Earth Star Bodhisattva uses hundreds of thousands of expedient devices to rescue beings who are suffer for their offenses within the six paths of rebirth. I see that he does so instinctively, without the least fatigue. Although this great Bodhisattva uses he is a inconceivable spiritual penetration to do such deeds. It doesn't take long for the beings whom he has helped in gaining release from retribution to fall into the evil paths again. Won't honored one, since the earth storm Bodhisattva has such great inconceivable spiritual powers, why are beings that are not able to rely on him to stay on the good paths and to be freed once and for all, please won't or not one explain that for us. The Buddha told Lord Yama, the beings of Jambu Vipa have stubborn and obstinate natures, difficult to tame, difficult to subdue. This great Bodhisattva continually rescues such beings throughout hundreds of thousands of ends causing them to obtain liberation quickly. For those beings undergoing retributions, even in the worst destinies, the Bodhisattva applies the strength of expedience to extricate them from their own basic karmic conditions and lead them to understand the events of their past lives. But because beings of Jambu Vipa are so bowed up by their own heavy bad habits, they keep revolving in and out of the various paths over and over as this Bodhisattva labels throughout many, many long ends to entirely effect their rescue and release. They are like people who, in confusion, 
lose their way home and take a dangerous road by mistake. On that dangerous road are many yakshas, tigers, wolves, lions, serpents, and vipers. Those confused people are sure to be harmed very quickly on that dangerous path. But then they meet a knowledgeable guide, skilled in avoiding all the potential harm, including the toxins of the yakshas and others. This mentor begins to lead the travelers off that dangerous path, saying, Beware, everyone, what business has brought you onto this road? What kinds of special skills do you have to avoid all those dangers? Hearing that, the confused travelers realize that they are on a dangerous path and turn back, attempting to escape. The kite guide then tells them to join hands, leads them off the dangerous path, and helps them avoid the deadly peril. When they reach the safe road, the travelers are relieved and calm down. Their guide then says to them, Take care, confused ones. Confused ones, never to get back on that path again. Once on it, it is hard to get off. It can destroy a person's very nature and life. The travelers who had been confused expressed their deep gratitude, and as they are about to part, the mentor says to them, If you see any other travelers, whether you know them personally or not, be they men or women, tell them that the dangers and evils on that path could destroy their very natures and lives. Do not allow them to unwittingly bring about their own deaths. In the same way, Earth's Bodhisattva, replete with great compassion, rescues beings who are suffering for their offenses and enables them to be born among humans and gods where they enjoy wonderful bliss. Once those offenders are released, from the suffering they experienced on the paths where their karma took them. They must never go down those roads again. They are like the lost people who mistakenly took a dangerous path and were led to safety by a kind mentor. They know now to never take that road again. Moreover, they exhort others not to get on that road by saying, We took that road ourselves when we got confused, but we escaped and now we know better than to ever get on that road again. If we were to set foot on it again, we would get confused and be unable to recognize it as the dangerous path that we took before. That being the case, we might lose our lives. The same holds true for falling into the bad destinies due to the powerful expedient means of Earth Star Bodhisattva. Beings can be freed and gain rebirth as humans or gods. If they were then to turn around and enter into the bad destinies again, those with heavy karmic bonds might remain in the house forever with no chance of escape. At that time, the ghost king Evil Poison placed his palms together respectfully, addressed the Buddha, and said, Word honored one, each of us, countless ghost kings of Jambuvipa, bestows benefit or inflicts harm upon beings di differently. However, karmic retributions cause those in my retinue to do more evil than good. Nonetheless, when we pass by a household, a city, a town, a garden, a cottage, or a hut, where there are men or women who have cultivated as little as it has a worth of good deeds, even if they have hung up but one banner or one canopy, used a, a little incense or a few flowers as offerings to images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, recited the sacred sutras, or burned incense as an offering to even one sentence or gatha in them. We ghost kings 
we respect such people as we would the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. We will instruct the smaller gods, each of whom has great power, as well as the earth spirits to protect such people. Bad situations, accidents, severe or unexpected illnesses, and all other unwelcome events will not even come near their residences or other places where they may be, much less enter the door. The Buddha praised the ghost kings, excellent, excellent, that all of you ghost kings joined Lord Yama in protecting good men and women in that way. I shall tell Lord Brahma and Lord Chakra to make sure that you are protected as well. When that was said, a ghost king in the assembly named Lord of Life said to the Buddha, World on earth one, my karmic conditions are such that I have a jurisdiction over the lifespans of people in Jambudvipa, governing the time of both their births and their deaths. My fundamental vows are based on a great desire to benefit them. But people do not understand my intent and go through birth and death in distress. Why is that? When women in Jambuvipa have just given birth to children, be they boys or girls, or when they are just about to give birth, good deeds should be done to increase the benefits of the household, thus causing the local earth spirits to be immeasurably pleased. The spirits will then protect the mother and child so that they experience peace and happiness and will bring benefit to the entire family. After the birth or kill, killing and injuring for the purpose of offering fresh meat to the mother should be carefully avoided, as it should parties that include drinking alcohol, eating meat, singing and playing musical instruments. All those things can keep the mother and child from being peaceful and happy. Why is that? At the difficult time of birth, uncountable evil ghosts, including mountain sprites, goblins, and certain spirits, desire to eat the strong smelling blood. I quickly order the, the local earth spirits of that household to protect the mother and child, allow them allowing them to be peaceful and happy and to receive other benefits. When people in such households witness those benefits, they should do meritorious deeds to express their gratitude to the earth spirits. If instead they harm and kill and have large gatherings involving feasting and entertainment, then the retributions that results from such offenses will be borne by them and will bring harm to the mother and child as well. Moreover, when people of Jambuvipa are on the verge of death, I wish to keep them from falling into the evil paths, regardless of whether they have done good or evil. But how much is this power of mine to have them increased when they have personally cultivated good rules. When those who do good, who do good in Jambuvipa are about to die, hundreds of thousands of ghosts and spirits from the evil paths transform themselves and appear as their parents or other relatives in an attempt to lead such people to fall into the evil paths. How much more is that the case for those who have done evil deeds? World Honored One, when men or women in Jambuvipa are on the verge of death, their consciousnesses and spirits become confused and dark. They are unable to discriminate between good and evil and their eyes and ears are unable to see or hear. That is why relatives of those deceased people should make generous offerings, recite the sacred sutras, and recite the names of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Such good conditions can cause the deceased to leave the evil paths. 
and uh, all the demons, ghosts, and spirits withdraw and disperse. Warned or not one, if uh, at the time of death uh, beings of any kind have an opportunity to hear the name of one Buddha or Bodhisattva, or to hear a sentence uh, or gather of a uh, Mahayana Sutra, I observe that such beings can quickly be freed from the pool of their accumulated minor bad deeds that would otherwise send them to the evil paths. The exception to that is crimes involving killing that warrant fivefold relentless retribution. The Buddha told the ghost king Lord of Life, Because of your great compassion, you are able to make such great vows and protect all beings in the midst of life and death. When men or women in the future undergo birth and death, do not retreat from your vow, but liberate them all so that they can experience eternal peace. The God King told the Buddha, Please do not be concerned until the end of my life. In every thought, I shall protect beings of Jambu Vipa at the time both of birth and of death so that they all find tranquility. I only wish that at the time of birth and death, they would believe what I say so that they could all be liberated and gain many benefits. At that time, the Buddha told the Earth Star Bodhisattva, This great God King Lord of Life has already passed through hundreds of thousands of lives as a great God King protecting beings during both birth and death. Only because of his great being's compassionate vows does he appear thus in the body of a great ghost king, for in reality he is not a ghost. After 170 ends have passed, he will become a Buddha named No Appearance Thus Come One. His errand will be called happiness and his world will be named Pure Dwelling. That Buddha's lifespan will continue for incalculable ends. Earth Star, the circumstances surrounding this great God King are thus. They are inconceivable, and the people and gods whom he rescues are countless. And a part two of Sutra of the Past Vows of Earth Star Bodhisattva. The true words of seven Buddhas for eradicating offenses. Li pu li pu di, jiao he jiao he di, tuo luo ni di, ni he la di, pi li ni di, mu he jie di, chen ling jian di, suo po he. Spirit mantra for rebirth in the pure land. Nam wa er mi tua pua ye, tua tua chia tua ye, tua di ye tua er mi li tu pua pi er mi li tua, si tan pua pi er mi li tua, pi cha lan di er mi li tua, pi cha lan tua chia mi li, chia chia nua, chiu tua cha li sua pua ke. Mantra for patching the flaws in recitation. Na mo he la da na du la ye ye chia la chia la chu 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 mo la mo la hu la hong he he su da na hong po mo nun zuo po he. Praise, universal worthy requests. Earth Star replies in depth so that beings in the three paths and six realms go free. From the dusty world of rebirths, universally expansive asks the Tathagata and learns of traditions and the ten fasting days, so that all reach the lotus terrace, homage to Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Earth Star Bodhisattva prays, Earth Star Bodhisattva, wonderful beyond compare, gold-hued in his transformation body, he appears. 
wondrous drama sounds throughout the three paths and six realms. Four births and ten kinds of beings gain his kindly grace. His pearl, shining brightly, lights the way to heaven's homes. Six ringed golden staff shakes open wide the gates of hell, leads on those with the causes garnered life and life again to bow at the nine flowered terrace of the honored the honored one. Namo Earth's great vows and compassion, Bodhisattva of the dark and dismal worms, on nine flower mountain, most honored one. With the ten wheels of power, you rescue all the suffering ones. Homage to Earth Star Bodhisattva. <laughs> Sammo di soha, 